Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench. This week I was on the MoGraph Slack channel, and somebody was talking about doing something with like a dot grid and some random movement, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I decided to mess around with it and see what I could come up with. So let's take a look. All right. Let me show you what we are going to make. So you can see this renders pretty quickly considering there's 80 layers in here with three expressions just on these. In the pre-comp, there is uh, motion but no expressions, but that's still 240 running right now in this comp. And as you can see, that's what it looks like. So somebody suggested that uh, Dan Eberts had a cool script for doing this, um, or doing something similar. And it's this motion on a grid. I'll put a link below so you can read all about how it works. I actually used a modification of one of his scripts to do my version. But of course I've got to do my own because you know your boy got to do his own thing. So my version works a little differently. I'm actually going to delete all of these other layers in here. Give it a little save. And then we're going to go back to zero. And I'm going to show you all the expressions I have on here. So the first one is a modification of Dan's. I'm going to post this project um, so you guys can download it and look at it and copy all this stuff out of it. I'm just going to explain kind of how it works. So what this does is it's going to have a segment duration and uh, that's basically every time period in which it's going to move. In this case, we're just using that to time remap. I have here set to the uh, composition duration of the uh, actual dot layer. Dan explains all this stuff, but basically this seeds the random number generator so that we get the same value between each segment. So here's where we're going to randomly pick our frame that we're starting on, and we're going to floor that value so we only get integers. So we're going to take the comp duration divided by 10, because every 10 frames, I have uh, basically this dot animate from the center somewhere else and then back to the center. So that's what this 10, 20, 10 over 24 thing is that we're going to multiply it back. That's going to be our frame duration for those 10 frames. So basically what we're doing is getting integer, multiplying it by 10, because the first one, if it's zero, it'll be zero. If it's, the next, if it's one, it'll be 10. If it's two, it'll be 20, and so on. And since it's in seconds and not frames, we're dividing by 10 over 24. So then the end value, in this case, is basically the start value plus that 10 over 24 frames. And then we use the same linear expression that Dan uses. That's the more complicated one. The rest of them are a lot easier. So what this expression of position is going to let us do is it's going to put all of our layers at even 100 increments on the grid. This actual comp isn't 1920, 1080. I actually made it uh, 2000 by 1100. And so it's an even uh, distribution on the grid. So since we want every copy of this to be on a point on the grid, but randomly distributed, we're going to seed the random with the index value of the layer. And then we're going to set the second argument to true, which is going to make that constant. It's not going to give us a different random value for every frame like it normally would. So then we set X to equal this comp dot width minus 100. And then we're going to divide it by 100. And what that's going to do is going to give us integer positions for each point of the grid. We're subtracting this 100 out of here because we don't want anything to go to the edge of the grid. So remember, this is going to be divided by 100. So this is going to be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 20. Well, 19 because we're subtracting the 100 to begin with. So then this value for X is going to be from 0 to 19. And the value from Y is going to be from 0 to 10. So then we're going to go random from 0 to 19, in this case, for the X. And we're going to multiply that by 100. And then we're going to add hundred to that. You could modulus this by like a hundred, I think, or whatever, something like that instead. I just chose to do it this way, making it basically an integer and then multiplying it by a hundred. So that one becomes a hundred, two becomes 200 and so on. And then it's just X, Y. So that'll be our new position. So rotation is pretty much the same thing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get an integer value. That's what the floor value is for, because random will actually give you a uh, floating point number. So it'd be, it could be like 0.2 or something like that. So what we're going to do is floor it. So that 0.2 becomes zero or 1.2 becomes one. 2.3 becomes 2, whatever. And actually, this doesn't need to go to, to 4, so I'm going to change that real quick. It only needs to go to 3. So we're going to get a random integer from 0 to 3. And that integer will be multiplied by 90. So 0 will become 0, 1 will be 90, 2 will be 180, and 3 will be 270. I want that so that all of these things face in a different random direction, so that even though we have a bunch of copies and everything, that it really won't be noticeable what direction any of these are actually facing. So basically, we get four times the directions and movement out of just one comp. So then we're going to just go into the single dot comp so you can see what it looks like. Every 10 frames, if I just move down 10 frames at a time, you'll see that dot doesn't go anywhere. But in between, it does all sorts of stuff. I kept it to motion only on uh, 90 degrees from this center point. Sometimes it just disappears. Sometimes it just hangs out there the entire time. The more of these you have, the more random your stuff can be. And if you don't want this to be an exact grid, you can move it around anywhere you want. So right now, if you recall, I only have it set to 230. So I'm going to show you how we do another couple of them. So what I'll do is copy this keyframe right here, put it on 240, 
paste it there. Put it on 250, paste it there. I'm actually gonna extend this to 251 because I think because there's a bug with After Effects that it won't show this last frame sometimes, depending on your time remap. All right, so all we need to do is move it. I'm gonna put this here. If you notice, my comp is actually a little bigger. My comp is 220 by 220. So it can move 100 up, down, every direction, right? But it is 220 because this is 10 and I wanted to have a little room around the edge. I could have gone exactly 210, but I didn't want it to have any sort of weird cropping if there was like any sort of subpixel stuff. So then we're gonna move this to 210 and then let's say we want it to go, you know, I didn't do one that went back a little bit actually. So I kind of like that. So I'm gonna do 150 here. Uh, it should be 160. Should put it almost exactly in the middle, I believe. I'm gonna hold this frame. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it there. And then I'm just gonna let it move back. So now it'll move, move to there, hold, and come back. And then for this one, change it around. We'll go, uh, we'll go up. So put it at 10, and then I'm gonna hold. Then I'm gonna move it to the right. So I'm gonna copy that frame I was at. Then go 210 here. And then I'm gonna move down. I'm gonna copy that frame, paste again. I'm gonna move it all the way down to 110, and then let it go back. So you can see it'll do a little box. Now what's cool about this technique is that After Effects, as long as there's keyframes here, we'll know how to interpolate the actual animation because our actual segment duration isn't 10 frames. It's almost a full second. So it'll actually reinterpolate the distance between each one of these breaks. So let's go back to our grid and then set this to 250 now. So now those other ones can be in here. And then all you have to do is duplicate your layer a bunch of times. So get it up to 10, duplicate that's 20, select all of those. 40, 60, 80, and then run it again. And there you go. You can actually select all of these if you really want. So this is, I mean, this is basically for a background element. So I'm gonna kill that real quick uh, and bring this down to like 20%. So now you can see they're just moving in the back. You could change the color if you wanted to. Uh, we can go back in here and make this a gray tone. So let me go back in here. It's more faded in the background. And if you want to, you can go use those same kind of expressions to change the opacity or whatever. But you should definitely check out Dan Ebert's site, motionscript.com. I've used that to learn a whole bunch of stuff, and I've, and I've used a lot of his techniques throughout my entire career. They've been very helpful to me. And so you could actually do use his expression to do the same kind of thing that I just did. It's a little different. Um, so we'll still start at 10. Uh, we'll start at 100, 100. And then he's got a number of columns and number of rows. But what I'm going to change right now is the gap. I'm going to make it 100. A thousand, a hundred. All right, and then we're gonna duplicate this a bunch of times. So as you can see, that's how Dan's would look. His would be a little easier to implement just because you have all the code. You can just straight up copy right off of his website. But I like to pave my own way sometimes and I felt like figuring out a different way that this could be done. And just as with anything else in After Effects, there are a billion ways to do it and uh, everybody can just come up with their own way. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. I am Joe from Workbench, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.